the baseball games or anything else, emergencies, there's a lot of them going on. Yeah. Folks in Louisiana, our prayers are for them. Just uh, go to aftermath.fm. That's aftermath.fm. It's free, free streaming. If that doesn't work for you, go to talkstreamlive.com. Free streaming. We have another link, several links at Talkstream Live. Always trying to give you an opportunity to listen to the program whenever you can, either online or otherwise. If you want to listen to the archive, you just go to aftermath.media. That's aftermath.media. There, for $4.99 a month. You can get those archives, and uh, they're immediately up on the, the website after the show. And uh, you can also get our library experience, which has movies, documents, all kinds of cool things. Stuff we talk about on this program. We also have yearly rates available and package deals. So let's go to aftermath.media. That's aftermath.media. So as I said back uh, at the first of the month, we had uh, Richard Hoagland scheduled on the program. But we had to kind of drop that because of the fact that President Trump got sick, and we wanted to talk about that for a little bit. We didn't really want to talk about the president being sick. And um, when I was, I was putting together a show about Venus, and of course we had our Lucifer show, too, which was kind of bizarre, where we stumbled upon the, the, the sounds coming from the sun, saying we were in the 25th cycle of the sun. We had these strange voices we were hearing in the, in the, in the transmission. And uh, so a lot of interesting things I had to put aside that I wanted to share with you about Venus and the revelation of phosphine. And uh, I thought to myself, one of the things I really enjoyed when I was a kid was a 1957 film called 20 Million Miles to Earth. And I think it still holds charm today because we were watching a little bit of it. We're hoping to put it in the library over at uh, Aftermath.media. But 20 Million Miles to Earth I watched it. One of my favorite characters other than Godzilla is Amir. Amir is this uh, Venus, uh, Venusian character. It's this reptilian creature, about 20 feet, 30 feet tall. And uh, he wasn't always that way because what happens is in the movie, uh, these uh, astronauts go to the Venus and they come back and they crash, plunging their ship into the waters of Sicily. And they bring back with them this egg and the egg washes up on shore and this little boy finds it. It opens up and here's this cute little reptilian creature, tiny little reptilian creature. And uh, they call him the Amir. Now Amir, it, it translated, it means, it means screamer. It's the Norse god. It's screamer. And so Amir, a small reptilian creature, an extremophile that had a network of spongy membranes inside its body. And that's what kept it alive. Uh, on Venus, tox the toxic gases of Venus, it was able to inhale them. But because Venus's lack of oxygen and atmospheric pressure were, you know, much smaller than here on Earth, the little guy comes out of the egg, but then he, exp he exponentially grows. And when he does, they put him in a cage, he breaks out of the cage, he wrestles an elephant, climbs the Colosseum, terrorizes everybody. But it's an amazing show. Uh, Ray Harryhausen is the guy that did the stop motion animation for this film, and uh, there are others too, there's Venusian, there's uh, It Conquered Earth, a Roger Corman film with uh, Peter Graves and Beverly Garland, and uh, I'm, I'm a big B-movie science fiction guy, so I mean, I know these films like the back of my hand. In fact, I may just go home tonight and watch um, in here. I mean, just watch 20 Million Miles to Earth, I think it'd be fun to watch it. But there's other things too I wanted to talk about, and, and one was that, uh, about, uh, I think it was, well, it was a while ago, the FBI declassified some documents uh, that were found uh, in the hotel room of Nikola Tesla one time. And it was, it was what sparked our imaginations to talk about whether or not Donald Trump was a time traveler because John G. Trump got all this information from Tesla. And uh, of course, Tesla talked about his death rate, he talked about time travel, he talked about all these things. And Trump said that he was really close with his uncle, Dr. John Trump with MIT. And, uh, and so, the alien property is called the U.S. Government's Office of Alien Property, kind of a weird name for uh, their investigation where it went in there and took all the, that information. But there was some declassified documents that stated that Nikola Tesla was from me. And I think it's funny but, but because, I mean, it, out, out of all the things that have been redacted on these, on these pieces of paper, 
which I thought was interesting. <laughs> and, I, and I've always had that in the back of my mind about, about Tesla and how, you know, when he was in Colorado Springs, he was developing this major radio that he could use to contact what he claimed beings on another planet. And others were saying, well, he was contacting Venus. And a lot of questions emerged after that, a lot of controversy involved with that. And I just worry that maybe what they were trying to do was they were trying to discredit him or delegitimize him by putting that in the records. But, um, you know, he, he basically predicted the smartphone in 19, uh, actually, uh, what was it, 1926, talked about the smartphone. And uh, in 1993, the smartphone came out. So 74 years before the smartphone, he invented it, or he thought about it. He, he said it would happen. And what I want to focus on, though, is that even though science fiction gave us stories about the Venusian type of invasions or, or beings or life, and then we had Tesla allegedly, you know, contacting these life forms, or at least being one himself, if you want to believe that. There was a, a report that was released in the 1960s. It was called the Brookings Research Institute, uh, the Brookings findings, actually. And it talked about, it was preparing the world for extraterrestrial life, or actually it was trying to cover up the fact that there was extraterrestrial life, or at least artifacts on the moon, Mars, and Venus. And I found that very interesting. I know one man who's an expert on this, and I wanted to bring him on, of course, we were telling you we were going to bring him on, Richard C. Hoagland is the principal investigator and founder of the Enterprise Mission, as well as the vision and the voice of the other side of Midnight, which is a great show. He is the recipient of the Angstrom Medal, the former science advisor to CBS News and Walter Cronkite, and author of best-selling books, The Mountains of Mars and The Dark Mission, The Secret History of NASA. Together with Carl Sagan, Richard Hoagland, Richard C. Hoagland co-created the Pioneer Plaque, and predicted life on Europa in his groundbreaking paper, the Europa 